Shootouts at the OK Corral. Enter the Wild Ones. The noise, first subdued, quickly becomes louder. Heads turn in the direction, pulses quicken, eyes widen. Horses whinnying, hooves drumming on bare earth, men hollering and whooping it up. Colt six guns being discharged in the air. Enter the Wild Ones riding into town. The sense of rush and adrenaline, the West being tamed or untamed, nobody knows for sure. The town folk, startled, exchange glances. They know what it means. The gunslingers are coming. There's no denying the impact. Even the creaky honky-tonk piano in the old saloon cannot compete against the rapidly approaching windstorm and falls strangely and abruptly silent. Mothers scoop up their children and run for cover. Old men nervously finish their drinks. The bartender quickly places a full whiskey bottle on the bar, double-checks the cleanliness of the half-dozen shot glasses, and then quickly retires to the far end of the long wooden bar. He pretends to busy himself polishing glassware, but he too is listening and waiting. The keen sense of imminence is heightened by dust flying past the windows. The noise is deafening. It's like an armada has descended on the sleepy town. Footsteps sound on the hollow wooden sidewalk outside. Heads turn to the swinging half-doors. Everybody is watching. The barman, pretending to have found a speck of dirt, is trying not to stare with the others. The old piano player, silently mouthing an inner conversation, is nervously stuffing tobacco in an old cracked ivory pipe. The card game in progress, high-stakes poker, is temporarily abandoned. There are only a very few occasions known to the players to warrant suspension thereof, but this indubitably is one of them. Tongues lick lips, throats go dry, Conversations stop. The ladies of the saloon lean over the banisters, craning to see. Even the town mutts stay there barking and back off respectfully. The saloon half-doors burst open, and there, in the dusty light bathed by respectful sun, stand the gunslingers, their weapons of trade dangling by their sides, their intent expressions instantly taking in their surroundings. Unsmilingly they march in, instantly taking charge. Nobody but nobody ever demurs. There's a new sheriff in town. John Wayne ain't worth shit here. So get off your horse and drink your milk. Get it? Don't you ever forget it, partner. The more things change, the more... They stay the same. The noise, first subdued, quickly becomes louder. Heads turn in the direction, pulses quick and eyes widen. The more things change, the more they stay the same. I should know, I drove those boys and gals. Oh no, I was never a gunslinger. I'd have shot myself in the foot or shot my mule by mistake. You don't want to trust me with anything sharp. No, I just drove them old horses and pulled that tired old wagon and rode along in the dust behind the team. I was the hired hand, paid to do a job, and I did it the best I could. But you know, I was kind of proud of those dudes. I know there were times, hell, I hate to admit it, on account of my image and all that. But if I was to be honest... There were times I almost had a lump in my throat. If you ever fly emergency medical services well, partner, you've driven that tired old wagon, and you've ridden into town, and you've messed with that there poker game, maybe blown the washing clean off the washing line, and probably, like me, you've banked for a better view of the carnage on the road below, and you've listened to the gasps from your medics. As toughened as they are, like a good knife hardened in the fire, they still have feelings. You all survey the engines knocked clean out of big rig trucks, transmissions lying in the ditch, heavy-duty pickup trucks rendered unrecognisable in mangled remnants, fire crews attending, 
not just to ominous smoke near gas tanks or raging fires, but also to the many other hazards, electric cables down, noxious chemicals leaking, occupants trapped, screaming in steel torture chambers. And you've winced quietly at blood-stained sheets and inert figures being frantically attended to by overwhelmed ambulance crews. Sometimes the repeated radio calls asking for an update of the helicopter's arrival time already prepares you. You already know it's bad. You don't need to be told the patients are critical. You can tell from the mess below. And then it's your turn as you gently, cautiously, respectfully bring your old wagon in on short finals, looking for wires and cables and trees and dust and an escape in case stuff goes bad. Down, down those well-worn wheels until you touch down ever so gently in the middle of the road, just outside the saloon. The doors open and the med crew, scissors taking the place of those old six-shooters, make their grand entrance. They shoulder their packs, shake themselves and head resolutely up that road into the unknown. Sometimes into real danger, just like the old gunfighters with just as much raw courage, they wade in to a perilous scene. The danger of being ambushed by a host of unpleasant surprises is no different from the old west. And yet, the A-team, without a hesitation, stride forth. It makes you feel good just watching those men and gals resolutely put themselves in harm's way. Like I said, as you cool your engine, as you watch them head up the road, it brings a lump to your throat. You can sense the relief of the ambulance crews and the volunteer firefighters. Sometimes you can see it in their faces and hear it on the radio. Thank God you guys are here. Horses whinnying, hooves drumming on bare earth, men hollering and whooping it up, Colt six guns being discharged in the air. Enter the wild ones, the sense of rush and adrenaline, the West being tamed or untamed. Nobody knows, for sure. Those helicopter medic guys and gals are the meanest, baddest, wildest things in the West. Not many years ago, their job was officially the most dang dangerous job in town. Yes, I've seen them afterwards, drained, stressed and exhausted. I've seen the emotion and I've felt the intensity of pain that a child's loss in the post-debrief group hug. I've sensed the hurt and the frustration of the stupid things so-called parents do. I've heard the anger, suppressed or not, at the inhumanity of man. But always there was a learning, a striving to be better, an unstoppable force moving forward, education never-ending. As I said, I'm just the old driver. I would be real dangerous with a six-shooter or a syringe, even a scissors. I'd stab myself first thing, I just know. But I'm happy to tell you, I'm proud of my humble role. And I'm proud to be on that little team. Take a bow, you guys and girls. You are truly magnificent. <laughs>